we got a fantastic uh, uh, agenda for today. Uh, I was looking at, you know, going through the agenda, and I want to go to every single one of the sessions, whether they're breakout sessions or not. I mean, it's amazing. Uh, and that, that, you know, you probably go to lots of conferences. That doesn't always happen. I think, uh, you know, VMA does such a great job of bringing us together um, uh, as peers, really, in an industry that's vastly changing. Mm -hmm. And I think it, you were saying earlier, it's one of the few places where you can have, you know, an intimate, open, honest conversation about the issues that face our industry and, and affect all of us, no matter what side of the fence or wherever you are, they affect all of us. Yeah, it's just small enough that we can really, truly talk and collaborate and have meaningful dialogue because we are in this, in this state of, of great change right now. Um, and I think that um, one of our takeaways that, that we've had you know, so far, even from the dialogue um, that we heard last night, is that uh, you know, the, the one constant that we have is that we don't really know the answers to so many of the questions that we have. In many ways, we're all trailblazers here. We're all going to be trying new things and new ways of working together. So um, we're excited for the sessions that, uh, that we're going to have over the next two days because we've got a, a lot of brave souls who are out there um, about how do we try these new things? How do we approach this new future that's really pretty unknown to us? We had a, we had a great couple of sessions last uh, yesterday. Who, uh, was anybody here in the session with uh, Augustine around ad fraud? I, I don't know. I'm glad so many of you didn't go because it's the most depressing thing I've ever heard, basically. <laughs> And I, I know you're over there, and I, I never want to see you ever again. And here it was so... But I, I mean, uh, as Augustine said, it, it, it's right that we discuss some really, really tricky issues. We're not going to solve them if we ignore them. And he had some, he had some really interesting thoughts about, about if you're vigilant, you know, we can uh, tackle some of this stuff. But, uh, but I did go away. I don't know what's more depressing, the election or listening to uh, Augustine. <laughs> By the way, this feels a little bit like Hillary and Donald. It's not right. going to be anything like that at all. We will not be as entertaining, no, right, as right. Hillary and Donald. No, no fortunately. Um, so um, we did hear, in the spirit of sort of moving on here, we, we did hear some great uh, questions and issues last night. So if we can, do we have a clicker? Oh, we have a clicker. I'll do the clicking. I thought you were going to do the clicking. You're you probably me, a better clicker than me. Yeah. Okay, okay. <laughs> so, uh, so we had a bunch of things last night, and we sort of paraphrased some of them because I think they set the tone for all of this conversation we'll have today, uh, whether it's in breakout sessions or fireside chats and so on. And, and the first one is just, you know, the old thing of ROI. And, and I, somebody, I think it was Ben was talking about, you know, creating 300 pieces of video uh, content behind a project. How on earth do you manage the ROI of that or even assess the ROI? That's a, that's a huge issue. We're all building tons of content all the time. Um, but how do you measure it? And somebody said, how do you, uh, it's rare that the cost of the actual creative itself goes into those calculations. So that, I think that's a really good discussion to, uh, to have. Yeah, and, and another, another thing we heard last night is like, what, what is video? Like we're at Videonomics. Um, how do we even define that today? Is it, the, is it the two minute long form video? Is it you know, the shorter, is it the 30 second? Um, or is it, what about these, you know, the three seconds? What about GIFs? What about when the sound is off altogether? Is that still considered video? Um, how are we defining that today? And then, uh, I don't, this is your scary one. I don't want to talk any more about this. <laughs> but the, the range is fantastic, isn't it? Ad fraud affects 2%, somewhere between 2% and 92% of our, of our ad buys. So I'm, I'm sure we're all thinking, well, we're probably all around 10%. I'm around 10%. He's around 12%. But it's really interesting that, you, that one, it goes so high, and two, that you can drive it back down. So this is, a, this is a, such a discussion that we, you can't bury your heads in the, hand on, uh, in the sand on this. We, we, we can never defeat ad fraud, uh, but at least we can you know, keep pace with it, push it back, and understand it, and so on. And, and if you weren't there, when, one of the things that was said that's really scary is even with these partners like Moat who are really trying to, um, you know, to fight it, uh, the hackers are, are just as quickly um, learning how to work around that. So it's not how are we going to solve today's problem, but how are we going to continually stay ahead of that? What else did we hear? Our, qu our quotes are a little... So, I mean, this is a quite interesting question that we, we were having earlier. The, 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 it, what, what is actually... What's sort of non-digital today? Surely everything... Uh, is digital, and uh, I mean, you're, you're a head of marketing, or head of digital marketing, right, for Nestle. That must be almost everything apart from sticking it on the shelf. So it, it just affects everything we do. But if we click one more time, 
Um, we thought it was quite interesting that digital media is only, <laughs> in some ways, half of all media time. And so even though that's a huge amount, we do get sort of caught up in ourselves around digital video. Uh, but in fact, there's a, there's a ton of other things that people are watching and doing still. Sort of thing. That's right. Well, that's quite interesting. That's right. So how do, we, how do we get that combination right? We've all been working so hard. Uh, you know, digital has been, been growing uh, because we had to, and we had to learn. We had a massive um, learning curve, so we're still putting a ton of efforts into it, um, into, into growing within a company like ours. I met Nestle. Um, but we can't ignore that we've still got other areas um, of, of media, so the world isn't just suddenly all digital. This is an interesting one, isn't it? That, that, when you always look to the, the lower cohorts because that's what we're all going to be like. But, uh, uh, you know, millennials are watching more uh, video than, than live TV. And, and that brings up this whole question, really, about, you know, what is television today anyway? You can watch the same program virtually on any other platform. I think it's a really important discussion to have as well, just around the sheer definition of television. But inevitably, um, especially younger people are watching less and less of the traditional uh, television as a as a as a, uh, uh, a piece of hardware in some ways. So. Yeah, and, and one of the things we heard last night was people talking about like, well, how do we even define TV? Like, we could be we could be watching Westworld, um, but we're watching it on HBO Go. So is that considered TV or is that considered digital? How do we define that? Right, my, my wife's a huge Modern Family fan. I don't think she actually watches it on, on regular TV. She right. watches it on, uh, you know, ABC Go. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we thought this was quite <laughs> telling as well that, you know, by 2020, there will still be people sitting down to actually watch that, uh, that piece of hardware called a, a television uh, on a regular basis, and it'll be 30%. Uh, 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 so that's kind of interesting. Yeah. It's in, uh, how many people here do not own a television, like, in your home? Anybody, anybody with no TV? We have one. We have one. I can see. Good. And how many have your TVs connected? Like your, your TVs are online, you can watch on demand. Yeah, like yeah. everybody. Yeah. OK. How yeah, about um, this one? This was another one that we heard last night. Yeah, terribly scary one, uh, viewability. I don't know what the heck. If somebody here <laughs> knows what the heck we're going to do about viewability, that would be great to hear. We have some answers. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So um, you know, as it, you know, when, when we think when we think about, I mean, it, it, it kind of connects to um, you know, connects to ad fraud. It connects to you know, how how are we even going to know what that is? We, somebody this morning was saying, like, how do we even talk about completion rates in a real way? Yeah. Like, is a completion rate? If when we all think of it, like intuitively, we think it's really one hundred percent. Right. Yeah. Um, so as we think about like our viewability, completion rates, this data, um, like how do how are we really going to define this as an industry? And yeah, the, sorry, we've got tons of scary stuff here. I know, but, but <laughs> the, some states is really fascinating that half of all uh, ad impressions are are either not viewable or served uh, uh, to a robot. So <laughs> that's interesting. So uh, um, you know, bots watch a lot of uh, uh, video, obviously. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, uh, uh, yeah, it's just scary stuff, scary stuff. So, you know, as we think about, some, you know, we just had our hands uh, raised about, um, you know, people who don't have TVs at all, and we've got, you know, cord cutting going on, we've got people who block ads all together. You know, what is, what is a company to do? What is a brand to do? Um, in the end, you know, it used to be, we were talking about in the, like in the 90s, right? You could buy one show, on a Thursday night and have pretty massive reach. Um, that doesn't happen anymore. Everyone's fragmented in all these different places. So um, with everybody even just trying to avoid ads at all costs, because a lot of people hate ads. Um, I, heard, I heard somebody say once, people, consumers don't really hate brands, but they really don't like ads. And they're gonna do everything that they can to um, avoid them. So, so how do brands and, and, and people who need to get messages out there, how are they going to do that in the future? Um, and, and it's going to relate to content. It's going to relate to good storytelling. It's going to relate to putting things out there that people truly care about and are saying, yes, this is something I care about. Please tell me more. Um, so what, I, what are we going to do in the future for that? I think, and I think it's a fascinating challenge because um, when I started out Procter & Gamble years and years ago uh, where the work was pretty much regimented, right? You, had, uh, you could afford to do one or two TV ads a year. You had to make sure you had all the couponing, that stuff. It was pretty boring, to be honest. 
I mean, the challenges that we have today across all the platforms, there's such wonderful opportunities to create different types of content from a GIF, from a meme, to a two or three minute piece of brand storytelling. Uh, on my team at Schwab, we do, we do everything. I just think the job is, okay, it's harder, it's, it's uh, more challenging, but it just makes us uh, better marketers. Mm -hmm. It makes us more thoughtful and more conscious. And uh, I'm always glass half full time, but I think this is a, it makes it a terrific industry to work in. That mix of a technology that you need to be savvy with, the mix of production, um, great ideas, inspiration. <laughs> we really have to work hard today. I, th I think it's so, you know, reaching consumers is a challenge, but God, it's a fascinating one, I think. Yeah. So a little bit on the ad blocking, you've probably seen the, like these kinds of stats um, before, but you see obviously in the younger cohorts, that's where a lot of the ad avoidance um, is definitely happening. Does anybody here not have an ad blocker on mobile or, uh, or uh, anybody not? Okay, so a few people not, but generally we all do, right? Yeah. <laughs> What's that? If you want to yeah, see the app. Yeah. Is There's anyone that. here yeah. a bot? There is that. There's yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, uh, it, it, and here's a, here was another interesting, you know, numbers. We talked about, you know, people are blocking ads and people are, are wanting to see a little bit less and less. We're just connecting our TVs and watching when we want to see them. Um, this, was a, a, this was a stat that we got from L2 where we see that um, the, the top 25 uh, cable networks, we're seeing a lot uh, decline in viewership. Look at it. It's crazy. Um, to see this. And, you know, it, 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 part of it may be like just from cable, the cable world, right? It went from like you have 50 channels to you have 150 channels to you have 250 channels. So, you know, so, so we might be seeing some of that fragmentation. Some of this might be from uh, some, of the, uh, some of the networks getting more online. Um, but, you know, we definitely are seeing some of this decline, and it's one of the reasons why we're having trouble with, um, with reach, to be honest. Good news. We have good news. It's not all doom and gloom. Yeah, it was hard to find, but we put a couple of good news slides together. <laughs> um, so this one's quite interesting. I think from the good news from a uh, from a brand owner point of view, that it, it, you know that we are we sweat over the fact that our our television in sort of the old uh, old traditional television blocks are not as effective as they used to, and you know digital banners are, are, are almost n completely non-effective for for what we do. But you know there are some major media players here who can give us the reach and attention that uh, that we need. And not to say any of the old media players can't do that, but there are uh, new opportunities, as we all know, to uh, to reach extraordinary amounts of people with extraordinary precision that uh, perhaps we didn't have before. So it's interesting mm -hmm. stuff. So like we, if we think about this reach, what we're seeing, um, this, this is uh, from Comscore, but we also have seen it from Nielsen, um, saying that the combination of the, the maybe non-digital with the digital is really what gives you the most effective reach. Um, and so putting, putting these combinations um, together um, is, is a, the a way to go today, at least through all of the um, different cohorts. So okay, this so is the, yeah, this is, content. Yeah, I mean, it's the, uh, probably the age-old question, you know, uh, how do you create compelling stories for uh, consumers to, uh, to engage with? And uh, um, I think that uh, all of us, I mean, brand storytelling, how many times you go to a conference and people talk about brand storytelling? Uh, so it, I think that's, uh, people do it very, very well. A lot of people uh, do brand storytelling very, very well. Um, uh, it's, a, it's quite a hard thing to do. It's got surprising uh, results in some ways. It's uh, some of the work that we've done at Charles Schwab that uh, we found uh, that even without our logo, anywhere near a piece of content about somebody owning their tomorrow uh, drives up our, our brand impression and, uh, uh, and brand favorability enormously. So it's a really interesting uh, uh, place to go. But you, know, you, you were saying earlier, who, who has time to sit through? It's got to be a very compelling piece of content to yeah. sit through something. Yeah, one of, one of you minutes. said last night, do people really want to, because a few years ago, we've been talking about storytelling for a long time, and then brands were like, ooh, I have something to say, and this is what I believe in, and we all got like anthemic about ourselves and had these like beautiful long you know, pieces of long form video um, talking about ourselves. Um, and then, I'm just speaking, I'm speaking for myself, right? But, but do people really want to 
watch that anymore. Somebody said that last night. Does somebody really want to watch like two minutes from a brand talking about themselves? Especially now when, when we're scrolling, you know, in Snapchat, and it's, it's 10 seconds, and people are getting so good at being able to tell a 10-second story, a six-second story. Um, so how do we, um, you know, stop talking to ourselves and, and start thinking about the, the consumer and what's really the best way that they want to see the content? And then how do we get stronger at being storytellers in micro moments? Ooh, and this one goes to the marketer. What does that mean? Yeah. You talked earlier about like the marketer who, uh, it, it, it makes us better as marketers. Because you know, in days of yore, right, we used to be able to, you know, we're gonna make a, our 30 second commercial for the year, and we're gonna make some print ads, and maybe some radio TV spots and an outdoor board, and like communications was done. It was like set for the year, and you could go do the, you know, the other parts of your job. And that's not true for a marketer anymore. Um, now it's, it's about you know, having this persistent content. How do we constantly think about how we're talking um, both to and with the consumer? How do we listen? How do we see the data? How do we use the data to get smarter? Um, the definition of a marketer um, is changing right before our eyes. And I'll, I'll tell a quick little story. When, when I was asked to join one of the first digital teams in Nestle, and uh, I, was a, I was a brand marketer at the time, and uh, I consulted some senior people in the organization and said, somebody asked me to like, move into this new digital strategy team. What do you think I should do? And there, there were people who said, I don't know. That's not really how you build careers. We don't really know how digital is going to go. That's not how we have, you know, have, um, uh, have seen people like, you know, successful. And, and, that was, and that was probably appropriate for them to say, because they watched people come up by making great 30-second TV spots and great print ads, and nobody knew what digital was going to be. Now imagine, you know, what is it, six, six years later, right, nobody would say that. Now people would say, gosh, if you're going to be a CMO, if you're going to build a career, you better really, really know your digital, and you better be able to um, stay ahead. Um, so we've seen so much change. Um, just even the past few years. This is a big one. I mean, uh, I'm probably all of us in the room who are on the brand side um, struggle now to find agency partners who can cope with just the range and depth and layers of execution that we need to do, from you know animated GIF to a long form video to print ad, whatever it is today. It's really, really hard to do that. Um, uh, and uh, uh, what, what I'm finding that we've gone from, uh, oh, we should be a big consolidator. Hey, we've got 30 agencies. We just need two or three big partners. And now it's gone in completely the other direction where we have multiple, multiple partners. And then um, it, with a, for a big company like Charles Schwab, you have to go through all the VMO process, all that sort of stuff, and which you know, really bogs down our internal systems. It's a really, really difficult word, uh, world for us. And I, you know, what, what I've seen out there is that the big agencies simply can't offer us the range of, uh, 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 a range of skills that we need. And what we've done in response is really hire people in-house. So we have planners in-house that we would uh, have probably had at our agency of record be, uh, before. Not having an agency of record, but having you know, maybe 20, 30 agencies we deal with, you need that sort of uh, ongoing planning skill uh, inside. We hire. Uh, people are very production savvy because one of the skills you need to have as a, a modern marketer, whether you're on your agency side or the brand side, is to really understand production. A lot of the time we go straight to Vim, uh, Vimeo, we go straight to Facebook to, to create content and miss out our, our traditional agency partners uh, along the way. And that's just going to be a more increasing piece. So uh, I feel really, uh, I feel really uh, quite bad for some of the big agencies, especially also in a world of, of trying to drive down costs where rather than spending you know, $1.8, $2 million on a 30-second TV ad a few years ago, and it might be a wonderful, lovely ad, uh, we can get uh, better engagement uh, from you know, 20, 30 million uh, people by spending a couple hundred thousand with Vimeo and getting their filmmaker to produce ads for us that storytell about uh, On Your Tomorrow, what we want our brand to talk about. Mm -hmm. And so that, that trade-off is, is just so enormous, and it means it's, I think it's so difficult for agencies in the old ways to survive in, in the way they've been in, in the past. So. Yeah, it's a, it's a real brand. struggle. I mean, the truth is brands, um, you know, brands had to create more content because mobile video enabled that to happen, right? And so um, brands, 
uh, you know, had, there's a greater demand, but the budgets were not infinite. So more demand, we have to create more content, but we cannot pay any more, right? So how do we do more with the same budget? Um, and so, you know, how, how do agencies respond to that and how quickly can they evolve to, um, to meet the needs? And then, and then conversely, you know, how do, how do, how do we evolve too? You know, as brands to, to really think smart alongside our agencies. Um, we were, um, uh, we, I overheard a conversation this morning about agencies and, and the convergence of even their, um, their capabilities. So media agencies who are thinking creatively and like creative houses or creative agencies that are getting much more involved in the media. Um, so how do we, you know, how do we do that and not try to really work in these silos but instead deliberately merge them together so that we can all think smarter together. Yeah, that's a great point. Um, so we're not success, but you know, capturing those a little bit and peering into the future, we thought these are some of the next slide is some of the questions that uh, we thought we'd probably discuss uh, over the course of the next couple of days. So I think, I mean, you said it about the only constant is, is change. And that's, uh, mm -hmm. I think that's what makes our interview exciting and interesting and you can't take uh, time away from it because it's, it'll change in a week, sort of thing. So, um, and then you know, top of that, you know, how, how do we how do we get ahead, or how do we not even get ahead? How do we sort of keep up as individual professionals, but also as uh, being part of uh, of companies that we represent and so on? It's really, really, really hard. And there are going to be times when you're behind. There are going to be times when you're ahead. It's just just what it is. So. Yeah, I think we've talked about most of these. Um, the bottom one's an interesting one. Um, you know, when we think about how do we get senior people in our company um, aligned to this? How do we help them understand the rate of change, how quickly we need to, uh, to, to make investments? I mean, with a big company, like with, with company, companies like ours, right, by the time we kind of get like something in order for everybody to move, it still takes a really long time. So how do we build in that agility, especially with, uh, with senior leaders who may not really be exposed to too much digital. Um, how, how, do we, how do we drive that influence? Yeah, that last one is a, a big issue, especially. Yeah. Uh, so that was our intro. We, uh, we thought those are some of the questions that were, were important to us, some of the questions that we, uh, we heard last night and that you, know, you hear generally. Um, as, I, as I said earlier, I think the agenda is a fantastic uh, venue for uh, putting these issues to the test. And, uh, we may, not be able, we may not have all the answers. I'm hoping we do, and somebody can write down and send out an email with all the answers on, but that's probably pretty unlikely. Email, so Pete, email Pete discussion. saying, I have all the answers. That'd be great, yeah. Hire me. <laughs> I'll sell it. Um, so uh, uh, let the discussion begin. Thank you. Great, thanks everyone. Thank you.